Hello everyone, Poppy Pierce here, recording voiceover for the first time on this channel. And it's been a while, I hope this year I can update more often. Actually I wasn't planning to do this video in particular, but this thing happened and I thought it could be interesting to show it off, so hopefully you'll enjoy it. Last month, I finally unlocked the single rarest skin in the whole game, Bloodied Gina. So what is so rare about it? Well, unlike every other costume in Revelations 2, which are unlocked through completing things here in Raid, the campaign, with DLC, or even a free patch, the only way you can obtain Bloody Gina is through an event in RE.net, specifically Invasion of the Huge Creatures. The actual requirement is witness the enemy's defeat. Sounds simple, right? Wrong. Take my war for it. I tried this event so many times that I lost count. It was only now that I was able to get it. You need to go in while the enemy is still alive or has low enough health that you're able to kill it. If you're not able to kill it on the spot, you're going to miss it because you only get one opportunity every 24 hours. It is difficult to know the exact moment you should go in because the site doesn't actually give you any health values, just gives you a percentage of its health left. So what I did this time was, the day the enemy's health dropped below 5%, I just refreshed the site until it dropped to zero, but the enemy was still marked as alive. As you can see, when I went in, its health was basically empty, but still it took my four weapons for it to die. Now my loadout ain't the strongest, I do however have two pretty good sniper rifles I customized for these events, and they do some really high damage on these enemies. I'll show the weapons and parts in detail at the end of the video for anyone who might still be struggling with this and are curious to what I'm using. Thank you so much. Once you manage to kill the thing, it will eventually show on our Ethernet with a metal next to the task. Once the event is over, it usually takes like a week for the rewards to be given. glory isn't she beautiful thank you so much not really <laughs> forgive me please i would say this skin is probably not worth the effort i mean it's just the dying gina you see for a very brief moment in episode one as claire gina The completionist in me just wouldn't be happy until I unlock everything in the game. So I'm glad she's finally mine. Now let's go over my loadup before wrapping up this video. For my weapons I go with two sniper rifles, a handgun and a magnum. The handgun could be replaced with an assault rifle or a machine gun. Just don't go with a shotgun since you cannot get close to these enemies. All these weapons are level 100 and upgraded beyond limits. The first sniper is the Muramasa. I really recommend this one. Great fight power, the best critical. Any critical hit you get with this is gonna double damage. It's the only weapon that does that in the game. It has a long range plus tag, which increases the damage from far away and the critical rate. For the permanent upgrades, I focus mostly on the firepower. As for the parts we got long range, which again increases your damage from far away, you will always want this in a sniper. We also got critical hit, which increases your critical hit rate. The more critical hits you can get with Amora Massa, the better, so this is a must. Next is electric ammo, which in the case of the sniper has 100% occurrence and max level. Electric ammo is good because enemies take more damage while they are being electrocuted. So while your first shot won't do extra damage, the next shot you do while they are being electrocuted will. I pair that with Electrocute for another 40% extra damage. 
When using elemental parts, you should use them together to take the most advantage of their effects. Unless they're stars, it will give you a little more firepower and a little more critical hit rate, which are both good things to have for Amura Masa. The second sniper is my most prized possession in Relations 2, the anti-material rifle with a rare tag, which is why it's called a Sledgehammer. Besides a name change, the rare tag gives you more firepower, faster firing rate, and piercing capabilities. So this is one if not the strongest version of this gun. I spent all permanent upgrades on the capacity as anti-material rifle cannot be reloaded in this game. For the parts I went first with capacity obviously, which almost doubles the number of bullets. Then damage. I had to settle both at level 19, level 20 parts take really long to obtain. Next we got critical hit, and the material's critical damage is not as high as the Muramasa, but hey, more damage is still more damage. Long range, pretty self-explanatory. This one is very important, charge shot C. C is the one with the most damage. This will make your fight power go over three times its original value. The anti-material is already the highest damaging weapon in raid mode, so this is literally my giant killer. The downside is that, well, you will need to charge it every single time. Unless it is ABSAA par for even more capacity. It also improves the fire rate, but in this case that's not important. All in all, between the upgrades and the parts, this gun went from 7 bullets to 82 bullets. That's pretty damn good. The Magnum is a Pale Rider, which is the most powerful Magnum in the game, told the slowest. Obviously, I focused my upgrades on firepower, as damage was important with the Giant. The part setup of this one is nothing too special. Didn't want to spend the parts I was saving for other guns here. So we are a full burst for speed and anti recoil so it doesn't go all over the place. The rest are stars, BSAA, FBC, and last, a critical hit. If I were to run this one properly, I would go for a setup similar to the rifles. Lastly is the P10 handgun with a rare tag, Coffin Nail. For the upgrades beyond limits, I gave him mostly firepower and a little more capacity. This wasn't a weapon I particularly made for this event, but more for general use. I gave it fire ammo, critical hit, long range, standard burn, again elements together, burst plus two, and a BSAA part. Now let's get to the skills. Don't pay attention to this, none of these matter. The only active skill that you can use here is a rocket launcher. It doesn't do a lot of damage, it actually does less than a rifle or magnum bullet. But if you have it, you can add a little bit more damage with it. The rest don't have any use here, they simply don't reach the enemies. Passive skills will play a bigger role. You will need the master skill for every weapon type you're carrying. In my case, as a sniper rifle, hang on a magnum. Each of these will over triple the amount of ammo you can carry in your inventory. It also makes the reload animation faster, which is nice. Next I got Evade Cancel, great skill, not necessary for this, though you could use it to cancel out of miss aim shots. Then we have Crouch Power, this one is a must, as long as you're crouching you will do an additional 30% damage, no matter what you are using. It's the only skill that will increase your firepower. And for last there is Grenade Master, this doubles the blast radio of your explosion. I put this for the rocket launcher, thought to be honest, I'm not sure it has any real effect here. It probably only works with the bottles, but since there was no other skill to use, might as well. So yeah, the last two guns are not the most ideal for this, but I did want to go over everything I use. After all, it did work for me. And that's it. Thank you for watching. I hope if you're still playing this game and trying to get this skin that you found this useful. If not, I hope it was at least interesting. And until the next video, bye!